Before we dive into Revit, it's important to understand how Revit is different from 2D CAD. If you're working in a 2D CAD environment, such as AutoCAD or MicroStation, you will typically have one drawing file for each view of your project. You might choose to use underlays for grids and levels, and certain repetitive layouts like cores. You might also use blocks to prevent you from having to draw the same thing over and over again. But you'll create each view for your project independently. Whether they're plans, sections, elevations or details, there will be no relationship between the lines on these drawings. By contrast, if you work in a 3D environment, such as Revit, you will be able to construct your whole building in one file. This will include your three-dimensional building model and all of the views that you choose to create of it. Each building element that you create exists only once, and you will use Revit families to construct your geometry. So if you modify any properties of the element in one view, you will be affecting all of the other views as well. If you're working in a 2D CAD environment, you will usually construct your different views using lines and hatching. You might draw two parallel lines which represent a concrete wall, and you will put those lines on a layer which represents which walls are cut in plan rather than seen in projection. All of these decisions are down to you. You choose to put the lines on the correct layer to ensure the line styles are set right. It's even down to you to make sure you've drawn the lines parallel and trimmed them correctly at the corners. If you wanted your walls to have a hatch pattern on them, you could choose to create a hatch, select the correct hatch pattern, put it on the correct layer, and then make sure that you remember to update your hatch boundary every time you move the wall. Things work a little bit differently in Revit. If you want to draw a wall, you will use the wall tool. You will choose what type of wall you want to draw, which will determine the thickness of the wall, what the wall is made from, and whether there are different layers in the wall construction, such as a block inner leaf and a brick outer leaf. How the wall is represented in your view will be governed by where the view is cut. If it's above the wall, then the wall will be seen in projection, and if it's within the height of the wall, then it will be seen cut. Each building element you create is intelligent. A wall knows that it's a wall, and it has associated properties because of that. For example, it knows its start and end levels, and those define its height. In 2D CAD, the graphical representation of your lines and hatching is all down to what layer you have put them on. You will probably have a company plot standards file which determines how each of the layers gets printed. In Revit, the representation of the wall will be governed by the object itself. Your wall knows that it's a wall, and your project file will have object styles for all of the different objects in your project. So whether your wall is cut or seen in projection, your project file knows how to display the lines and hatching on screen and in print. There is no opportunity for you to put the wall on the wrong layer to change its representation. However, this doesn't mean that your wall has to look the same in every view. You have many opportunities to change how things are displayed, from what amount of detail you want to show to any custom overrides. For example, you could choose to display all of the walls on one plan view with a different shading according to their material, and you could make these view overrides standard across multiple views by using view templates.